everybody. It's Allie from Padfoot Palms Poodles and Pals. So today, very early in the morning here, um, I have been up since 4 a.m. That's why I'm looking like a hot mess, feeling like a hot mess, feeling like there's not enough caffeine in the world to make a difference. But I wanted to do a little bit of a different video. This video is a bit more of a story time where I'm gonna tell you all about my experience with my previous flight nanny and how everything went wrong when we were trying to get our latest edition poodle puppy um, shipped to us. So if that's something that interests you, if you're here for the tea and the drama and the suspense, then definitely stick around. Okay, so let's just get comfortable and get right into it because this story is quite a doozy. Now, I would like to preface this by saying that I have used the same flight nanny for years. I never had any problems with her. I never had any issues. Recommended her every chance that I got. But when she tried to expand her business and start using other flight nannies right underneath her, that's when everything kind of fell apart. So let's rewind a little bit. Um, we had been on a wait list for a puppy for well over a year. Very expensive puppy. So when it finally became our turn to get a puppy, um, we were jumping for joy. I mean, just ecstatic because the wait list is so long that we thought for sure, a puppy's playing on the floor. We thought for sure that it was going to be another six to eight months before we would even get close to getting a puppy. So there was a lot of buildup, a lot of anticipation, and a lot of planning that went into getting this puppy. So there's a little bit of backstory for you. So um, once we were at the point where we were able to choose our puppy and we had an idea of the go home date, I immediately reached out to my flight nanny um, to go ahead and set up the delivery. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Flight Nanny services, Flight Nannies fly in cabin, right, in the airplane, not down in cargo, with the puppy. Um, they need to be under 20 pounds and have their shots and all of these requirements, right, so that they can fly in the plane. Um, this is a really great way to you know, for breeders to get their puppies from A to B without having to ship them cargo, right? Which is what they used to do back in the day. Or to use ground transport, which can take many, many, many days. It can expose the puppy to all sorts of um, other dogs and diseases and sickness. And, you know, there's always the potential for lack of care, right? It, it, it's very complicated. So, um we decided to go with a flight nanny. Now, I didn't hear back from my flight nanny that I usually use. And so I ended up reaching out to another flight nanny um, who was more expensive. And since this puppy was so expensive to begin with, I was like, okay, well, this is unfortunate because our flight nanny that we usually use um, was always very affordable. So anyway, uh, a few days goes by and I hear from my flight nanny and I'm like, oh, okay, great. Her price is great. 
she's like, yes, we can lock you in if you pay a deposit, which is pretty normal. So I pay the deposit and I'm like, great, let's lock in this date um, so that we can go ahead and plan to get the puppy. Now, one of the reasons why I do this is because, A, I like to schedule the vet visit for as close to after I get that puppy as I can. Now, if it's a Friday or a Saturday, right, my options are limited. You know, I have to wait until the following Monday or Tuesday to have a vet appointment. But the more that you can plan ahead, the better off you'll be. So that's one of the reasons why I really like to schedule these far in advance so I can get that vet visit scheduled. Secondly, I like to get it planned because flight nanny schedules have a tendency to book up, right? I mean, especially, um, you know, with the whole pandemic and everything, like people are just buying puppies left and right. It can be very challenging to get the date that you want. And I like to be able to have um, a couple of days, if not longer, to spend with a puppy when we first get them. So I like to take a couple of days off of work if I can, right? Spend a lot of time with them, kind of get them used to me and our routine and slowly introduce them to the other dogs. It's a whole process. So um, I was very excited that our flight nanny was available, paid the deposit, right? Locked down the dates. So we're getting close to the date and I check in with the flight nanny. I'm like, hey, are we good? Check in with the breeder. Hey, are we good? Everything's good. So as we get closer to the date, um, I like to just go ahead and pay in full, right? I pay my breeder in full. I pay the flight nanny in full. Like, Everybody's paid. We're good. It's just one less thing for me to worry about. Um, I don't recommend that puppy buyers do that because you're in, it's a different kind of relationship. You know, a breeder buying from a breeder is much more of a, a business transaction, I guess is how you would think of it. Um, anyway, don't, don't do that. Don't pay your flight nanny in full until you have the puppy in hand. So anyway, I paid in full, <clears throat> paid the breeder in full. We're good to go. So the night before, I don't hear anything from the flight nanny. And this is out of character for her. And I'm like, well, that's really weird. I guess I should have heard from her. But I know that sometimes she's traveling the day before. <clears throat> excuse me so I'm like okay well she was probably just traveling or whatever I'll shoot her a text message I do no response the next morning I send her a picture of my puppy and I'm like hey um you know can you please make sure you let me know once you have him just so I know that everything's good no response and that was at I don't know, probably probably around 6 or 7 a.m. Central Time. So she's Eastern Time. So, you know, very early in the morning. Certainly way earlier than if she was catching a flight to go all the way over to the West Coast to get our puppy. So I hear from the breeder when it's time to for the breeder to go to the airport to drop off the puppy and we're all in a group text and the breeder's like hey i'm gonna be there in like 20 minutes i'm like okay great i haven't heard from the flight nanny i guess she's on the plane you know i'll let you know if i hear something nothing so the breeder's like hey i've been sitting here for like 30 minutes any idea what's up and i'm like hey i don't know so i'm checking flights and there is another flight coming from Flight Nanny's airport that's supposed to arrive in 30 minutes. So I'm guessing that maybe she just got the time wrong. And I'm like, hey, I'm thinking she got the time wrong for the flight. So I'm hoping that her flight will land in like 30 minutes. Breeder's like, okay, 
very understanding. I'll wait. 30 minutes goes by, no text from the flight nanny, no nothing. So I start calling and the phone is ringing, right? And it rings normally and goes to voicemail. Now, if the phone had been turned off or disconnected or something like that, right? It would have gone straight to voicemail. That would have been my first clue, but it didn't, it, it rang normally and this will be pertinent later on. So I leave a voicemail and I'm like, hey, just making sure everything's okay. Um, I told the breeder that I think that you got your times mixed up. So we're hoping that you just landed. Please get on the group text or call me back or something and let us know that everything is okay. Hey, look, Shazam came to join us. I know, you're so tired. <laughs> okay, so that text never arrives. The phone call never arrives. The breeder has been there for now an hour and a half. And she's like, hey, I don't know what's going on. Um, but I'm gonna have to leave here soon because I have another puppy delivery that I have to make. I, I can't just sit here forever. So I'm starting to panic. And I'm like, holy crap, what is happening? And like I said, I've used the same flight nanny for years. So on a personal level, I'm becoming really concerned that something awful has happened to her. I'm thinking she had a car accident. I'm thinking something happened, right? I mean, I'm, I'm really starting to panic. So I'm calling repeatedly. I'm texting. I'm checking her Facebook, I'm messaging, you know, her Facebook, both her business page and her personal page, no response. And it's not showing me that the red, the message has been read either. So I'm like, okay, so she's not checking her Facebook. What is going on? Like, this is really weird. So another 30 minutes goes by. And the breeder says, hey, I'm going to have to leave. And I am livid. So not only has this breeder been sitting at the airport for at least two hours, if not longer, but I have no clue what happened with the flight nanny for a service that I have paid for. So I'm like, okay, just keep your cool. We can reschedule this. It'll be fine. Maybe she just, you know, something happened to her phone, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping and praying at this point that something horrible didn't happen to her. So I'm calling her phone. It's ringing. I'm leaving voicemails. It's not like it's going straight to voicemail. So again, I'm reaching out on Facebook and at this point, the entire day has gone by, right? So this was in the morning. It's now evening. It's now dinner time. And I am in a legitimate panic because I know that her husband works nights so if something happened to her, God forbid, nobody would know, right? Like, so I, I, I'm in a real legitimate panic now because this is so unlike her. And so I'm messaging her friends on Facebook and I'm like, hey, have you talked to said person? Do you know if they're okay? They were supposed to pick up a puppy. I haven't heard from them. You know, I don't have her husband's phone number. I'm really worried. I just want to make sure she's okay. Do you have a means to contact her? Now, most of the people who responded were kind of iffy about talking to me, which I completely understand. And they were like, oh, you should just call her phone. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, duh. I already did that like 20 times. So none of them were any help. None of them had 
the husband's phone number. It was a complete waste. So all throughout the day, I'm checking to see if she's read my Facebook messages. They None of them have been read. So finally, at 8 o'clock at night, um, Suze says to me, she's like, hey, we need to make some other arrangements to get another flight nanny because, you know, the breeder's going to start charging us a boarding fee if we're, we're leaving this puppy for, you know, an extended period of time. And obviously something is going on with the flight nanny. We are hoping for the best, but you know, we don't know where she is or what's going on. And I'm like, great, now I'm gonna have to pay another flight nanny. So I make a post in one of my breeder groups. It's the Badass Breeder Group. If you're a breeder and you're not a member of the Badass Breeder Group, or you haven't purchased the Badass Breeder book, I highly recommend that you do it. That's a whole separate video. So I make a post in there and I explain what happened and I'm like, guys, I just need somebody who can help me out, like in a pinch, like I really need this puppy ASAP. So I end up taking um, one of the recommendations from one of the breeders in the group and find my now flight nanny, who I will be using from now on because they are phenomenal. So pay the deposit to the new flight nanny, get everything scheduled. We're good to go. Right as I'm finalizing everything with the new flight nanny, I get a text message from a number that I don't know. It says, hey, this is original flight nanny. I'm so sorry. I was getting on the plane um, this morning to travel to go get your puppy and I dropped my phone in a puddle and I picked it up quickly and I thought everything was fine. But then when I turned my phone off, when I got on the plane, right, for takeoff, when I went to turn it back on, once I arrived, it wouldn't come back on. So the flight nanny was saying that she was there to pick up the puppy, but she didn't have any means of communication to say that she was there. So I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're okay. Like we were thinking the worst. We thought you were in a car accident. We thought something happened to you. I'm so glad you're okay. It's all right. We'll get this figured out. She apologizes profusely and says that she just got home, that she's texting me from her husband's phone. So I told her, I was like, okay, well, unfortunately, because I didn't hear from you for so long, I had to reschedule with another flight nanny. And she was like, I completely understand. It's okay. And I said, okay, I'm going to need for you to, you know, refund my money so that I can pay the other flight nanny. So she says that when she wakes up in the morning, she'll be able to get on her computer and refund the money. So I get everything scheduled with the new flight nanny and immediately I'm noticing that there is a huge difference. So first of all, there's a contract for me to sign. Fantastic. I'm a huge fan of contracts and everything is super professional. There's a group text, there's a travel coordinator, there's the flight nanny. They give me the flight information and she gives me this website where I can go and track the flight. So not only do I know when the plane arrives, I'll know when the flight nanny is on the plane to then come deliver my puppy. So if there's any flight delays or a plane doesn't make it and they have to switch to another plane or whatever, all of that information is provided to me in real time on this website. Phenomenal. I was so excited. So 
anyway flight nanny goes picks up puppy from breeder i'm getting text updates all along the way at one point the flight nanny um, was having some challenges going through security and i was like hey i just want to make sure that you guys have made the flight because it's like 30 minutes before the flight and uh the coordinator actually texted and said yes the flight nanny has the puppy and they're um they had a slowdown in security but they're good to go they're getting ready to get on the plane and then we'll get another update so even when the flight nanny wasn't available I was still getting updates from the coordinator. Fantastic. If you're wondering what that sound is, it's the puppy and Kennedy playing beside the couch. Okay, so Flight Nanny delivers puppy. We pay Flight Nanny in cash at, at drop-off. And if you haven't seen that video of us picking up our puppy, definitely go check that out. I thought that this was going to be like a fluke, whatever. It was just weird, right? Well, I messaged one of my breeder friends who I had recommended to use Original Flight Nanny. And I'm like, hey, I just wanted to let you know about what happened because this was a huge mess. And she messages me and she's like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, um, I had original flight nanny stand me up twice. And she tells me these stories about how, um, you know, she had to refund the uh, flight nanny cost to one family because the flight nanny left the, um, the pet owner's sitting at the airport for two hours and didn't tell them that they missed the flight and then wanted them to come back a different day like it was this whole big huge mess and she said that it happened twice and she was really really upset because not only as the breeder was she out that money but that the flight nanny had handled it very unprofessionally you know, was basically saying, hey, just so you know, if the um, pet parents don't pay, when we show up with the puppy, then you have to pay. Otherwise, we'll just bring the puppy back. And she was like, are you kidding me? You missed the flight, didn't bother to tell anybody, rescheduled the dates. It was a huge mess. So I was really flabbergasted to hear this because I'm thinking the experience that I just had was just a one-time fluke right because things happen like you drop your phone in the water okay I get it but apparently this is something that this flight nanny is is having trouble with apparently everybody's gonna start barking Sorry, everybody started barking. So come to find out this was not a one-time thing. This was a pattern. So I had already had this really super positive experience with this other flight nanny service. And so I was like, okay, obviously I need to make a switch. So in researching and talking to a couple of my other breeder friends, come to find out that the two of us are not the only ones who have had negative experiences with this flight nanny. So I was like, okay, this is obviously really bad. Um, her service has obviously gone... Hi, Sega. What do you think? I love you. Yes, you're a good girl. <laughs> Oh, so tired. So, um, this is obviously a pattern, right? And one of the things about me is that I am fiercely loyal. And I will, if I get good customer service, I will recommend your business to any and everyone who will listen. But 
if I feel like you've screwed me over and I didn't do anything to screw it up, I will absolutely take my business elsewhere. So what I ended up doing is going back through all of the breeder groups that I'm in and every comment in the last year where I had gone through and recommended Original Flight Nanny, I went back and deleted it. And there was one instance where I actually couldn't delete the comment, so I messaged that breeder and said, hey, just so you know, I no longer recommend this Flight Nanny. And that breeder messaged me and said, hey, yeah, I use them, and holy cow, it was a huge cluster. So I was like, okay, well, that's really unfortunate, you know, because they didn't start out that way. But, you know, you you can't always save people from themselves. Everybody's going to start barking again. That's the puppy whining. Anyway, it was a huge mess. But thankfully, we have a great flight nanny service that we'll be using going forward. Super excited about that. And uh, we got our puppy. And he's pretty fantastic. Right, buddy? Yeah. He's a good boy. <laughs> okay, you're a good boy, too. You're too big. Get off. All right. So, anyway, that is the story of going to get that puppy. Really, Kennedy? He just ate his whole head. Don't eat this. Hey, no bite. No bite. Good boy. He's just a little amped up right now. Okay, well, I am going to jump off of here and go play with the dogs. Um, I will leave the Flight Nanny's information in the description box below of the one that I currently recommend. Um, yeah, and if you've used a Flight Nanny and had a bad experience, make sure you comment down below and tell me all about it because I had never had an issue until this happened and it was kind of crazy and super stressful. So, okay, we'll see you guys in the next video.